So, hi, I'm here with Gary Cook from Invasive, lead singer of Invasive. Dude, thanks for coming. Yeah. Um, lead singer of Invasive, do you play anything? Mm -hmm. I play guitar. You play guitar? You play anything else? Um, no, guitar. That's <laughs> it. Good to know your limits. Did you, so, well, how did you start? Did you start singing first? Did you play guitar first? Started singing first, then I went to guitar, and I went to back to singing. Yeah. When... How did, how did it all start for you? How did music start for Gary Cook? Hmm. I guess when I was six, I sang a, in a, a school play. I sang in the school, a church band. At what point did you pick up guitar? You sang first, you went mm -hmm. to guitar. I started playing guitar in high school, uh, but I'm probably like 15. And I assume that was followed or, or inspired by uh, discovering rock and roll and saying, ooh, I'm going to yeah. I'm see about living the debaucherous life and uh, play some rock and roll really loud. Yeah, I mean, you know, I guess I, I wanted, I've wanted. i always wanted to be a, an entertainer of some sort. I, don't, I think that this is what I've always been, really. It took me a long time to figure that out, really. I mean, you're, you know, when you're going through life, you're, you got all these influences telling you you got to do this, you got to do that, you got to do this, you got to do that, and so you're you know, bouncing back and forth trying to figure out who the hell you are, and at some point, I guess I just finally came to terms with, I'm a musician and this is what I'm going to be doing for the rest of my life in one form or another, you know, I'll be an entertainer of some sort, so, but yeah, man. Tell me about Invasive. Um, well, the, the band with me as being part of it started in 2013, um, they had a, they had another singer and he quit. And so I joined and rewrote the lyrics and the songs a little bit, moved stuff around, and, and we released that. So that was back in 2013, we started that. And uh, So yeah. did you answer an ad, like, or did you just know the guitar player or somebody? No, I got a, I got a message on um, Facebook to the, they wanted me to audition, and they sent me some tracks, and I retooled some of the lyrics and went in and said, this is what I have. And, they liked it, and that was it from that day on. Just for the sake of a single person answer, who inspired you to play? Mm. You know, uh, Led Zeppelin was a big influence. I thought they were a cool band. I liked their music. And uh, then I got into metal. Started listening to Dio and Ozzy and those guys, you know, Metallica and so on and so forth. And here I am. Um, I presume there were other bands, right? As far as as far as you were in, other oh bands yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. I started a band uh, years ago called Chain Reaction. We played in Spokane all over the place, and um, and I played in a band called The Edge for a while. But yeah, I mean, off and on, just I've done cover bands. I've done you know original bands. When you're when you're doing in your in the original bands, are you the writer guy, or I did you write... did you eventually become like the the lead artist in it, or was it always just something that you were in and played, and then eventually I start my own thing and I'm doing it all this time? No, the first band I started was that way. I wrote all the songs, you know, and then um, I think I've always been the lyricist, you know, I've come up with the melodies and the, with the guitar player, you know, they'll write a riff and then we'll just tool until we get through. Yeah, you just keep, you know, messing around with riffs until you like what's going on and it's a process, you know. Sis, are you like a collaborative writer guy, or, or do you tend to write most everything you present as an idea, or do you all sit in the room we and say, oh, play that again? Everybody has ideas, so we put our ideas together and we come up with a song. Everyone has their parts, obviously, guitar players playing guitars. and It's, it's like putting a puzzle together, too, so like, you know, you don't want to like rule out anything. Um, because there's a lot going on. So yeah, there's it's a collaborative. Well, I love that thing. analogy, except that it's like a puzzle that came in an empty box. Like you don't even know what the picture <laughs> yeah, is until you're done making yeah, it. Yeah, pretty much. Like what's your writing style? Are these things like personal, deep inside? This is the, the inner dark shadows of Gary. I think they're both. Sometimes they're personal. Sometimes they're just observational. Sometimes they're just stories. You know, I guess it's both. And when you play something, you, you're like playing to yourself at first. Nobody's really listening to it, and then so like, 
at some point. You're like, okay, this sounds pretty good, and you share it with somebody. And then, you know, if they validate it, then I guess it continues. I, I don't know. Every song, songs die. I mean, you write, there's probably a, a, some musician, you're going to write hundreds oh. of songs through your whole life, and some of them are never heard by anyone. I swear <laughs> to God, <laughs> you know, I, don't, like, I don't, I haven't talked to anybody yet that, that gets that. These kids today, they need to learn that. They need to learn not every song you write is going to be great. Yeah. And, uh, and sometimes even the one that is great is just going to be yeah, kind of lost yeah. to the side and every band went what, what song have you written do you think would have lit the fuse for that the kid Gary oh man I, I think Illuminati probably uh, I like that song a lot I like the lyrics a lot you know uh How many albums has Invasive done? Uh, we only went and recorded the five that are on the EP currently. Um, we're uh, actually writing and getting ready to go in the Those studio. Those albums again. or songs? Songs, five okay. songs. So there's one, one, uh, you know, ex extended play album's got five songs on it. We recorded that at Amplified Wax here in Spokane, and Jimmy was producer on it and helped us produce it. So did a great job. Um, we're we're got like four or five new songs now that we're hoping we get you know in there this winter and knock them out and is this gonna that. be is it gonna be another EP or is it gonna be you know combine it all I think we're probably gonna combine it all you know I think probably be the best thing to do besides besides just being like business guy out of the band you're also something that I call just for lack of a better terminology a, a scene maker in town because you're doing something that isn't just a band and so you're promoting now which is a nightmare I don't wish on anybody <laughs> but I also recognize that it needs to get done yeah so you're promoting and booking bands and shows mm -hmm. in and around and then you are also throw your own festival now mm -hmm. this is six years yeah, yeah. pitch that for a second uh, so State Line Music Fest is uh, July 7th at Cruiser's Bar and Grill. 2018. Okay, got uh, the lineup still going, uh, so I think we're at 12 bands right now. So, What do you think, as a, as a newly anointed scene maker now, <laughs> what, what do you think, <laughs> what does the scene have to do? How do, we, how do we get cooler? Like, just in our own region here first, and then... Oh How man, you, you know, uh, it's so hard. I, it, the thing is that there's so much data now, and so, you know, uh, there's a lot of, and, and for lack of a better term, junk data out there. And so, like, it's our jobs as uh, consumers to sift through all this. And so, it, it's an exhausting task. There's so many bands, it's, um, it's just, it's a, the market is flooded. Um, First, honestly, I started the music festival because nobody would book my band. You know, I was, I was having a hard time finding shows, and I'm like, well, I'll just make my own show. So I rented a stage, and I found a location, and booked all the bands, and a bunch of them canceled at the last minute my first year, and uh, but and it rained, but it still happened, you know. And uh, then it, every year has gotten a little bit better and a little bit better, and now you know now it's like the lineup is getting full right away, and. I was scrolling through Facebook. I saw uh, you guys just hit 4,000 likes. Yeah, and that just happened the other day. And you said before that, like, you put a post where a label isn't even going to talk to you unless you got 10,000 likes, mm. which sounds like labels to me. So, but I thought about it and I wanted, and I wanted to ask, like, what, what advantage do you see to having a record label now? Um, you know, they, uh, they know more people. They, uh, they still have better connections and access to things that, you know, we may not be able to have. Um, that's really what it comes down to. It's not really about money, you know, because, I mean, they're not going to put any money up front. Well, I don't, yeah, I don't know, think they is. give out any money no, anymore. No. But. Uh, but, but they do have access to certain things that, you know, um, if as an unknown musician, you're not, 
they can call their buddy at so and so plays and get you a show with so and so things like that so, you know so i mean you know you get connections i guess you know you know obviously we want to play a bigger bigger shows you know yeah. if they put you on a tour and you're playing in front of you know five ten thousand people then I don't Hopefully. think I, I, you know, I don't think artists, even the big artists now, really make any money. All the stuff they have is um, owned by the record company. It, it's the illusion of them having money. They're driving around in a great car. They live in a nice house, but it's they don't own it. Well, and it, the second they're not doing what the record company wants, they're not going to have Pearl, any of that stuff. So like, Pearl Jam owns it. Yeah, I mean, it could be done. I mean, but the thing is, that, that's why that was in the nineties. That was no, no, those guys now. Oh, really, dude? Those no. guys are just as big. They do what they want when they want. Oh. Um, but they, they always, they were barely under label control anyway, and then they just basically broke free and got out of it. But see, that's my point, is that, you know, we, we don't have to, like, we don't have to have been under label control at first. We don't have to, like, break free like Prince and then sue our, <laughs> sue to get our stuff back. Right. Or, like, it's just, it can be done, and I think artists are in a better position to have, or make more of their money now than we've ever been, because... You know, labels aren't necessarily in the way. All right. So, what uh, what do you got coming up? What's coming up for Invasive? Uh, uh, Invasive will be uh, playing in Seattle uh, Hard Rock Cafe uh, April seventh in uh, in uh, State Line Music Fest this July. This is uh, July seventh at Cruisers Bar and Grill. Two thousand eighteen. Well, thanks for coming out. All right. Thanks for thanks doing for this. Thanks for having me.